With Acheron's mysterious introduction in version 2.0, many people wanted to learn more about her. Ever since we first met her, it was clear that she was a character of great importance to the story. Why was she in the same dream as us? Why does she keep forgetting things? What's with the red text? Well, if you are confused, don't worry. In today's video I'm going to explain all the lore behind Acheron's character, uh, at least the lore that we know of as of now, and yes, I am also going to talk about all the Honkai Impact 3rd references. But in another video, I want this video to focus more on the stuff that are self-contained to Star Rail. Initially, I wanted to cover everything about her character in a single video, but as I was writing the script, I realized that there is so much material that it's better if I just make two separate dedicated videos so that people won't get too overwhelmed. So don't worry, that video should also drop... Uh, soon. Anyway, do I know you? Acheron is a self-proclaimed galaxy ranger. She seems to be aloof and touch turn carrying a blade with her that she never seems to draw out of its scabbard. In reality, she's not really a galaxy ranger. Boot Hill, who is an actual galaxy ranger, is after her, presumably because she uses the title as a cover, among other reasons. Emanators of nihility are beings that are not supposed to exist and many are wary or outright antagonize them. That's why she needed a cover to move around and the galaxy rangers fit her character. They are known for traveling alone, being elusive by nature and very powerful. In order to get to Panacone, she also stole the invitation that the Everflame Mansion received and killed Duke Inferno Ifrit in the process. In Greek mythology, Acheron is one of the five rivers of the underworld. It is often described as the river of woe or the river of pain and is associated with the realm of the dead. The souls of the deceased were believed to cross it on their journey to the afterlife. Acheron has come to symbolize sorrow, lamentation of the fallen and the realm of the dead. Similarly, her name in Japanese, Yomi, and Chinese, Huang Chuan are all based on mythological rivers from their respective cultures that are associated with the afterlife. We also know that this is not her actual name, but just like Locha, it's just a nickname. Her real name was said to be complicated to pronounce. <coughs> right then, my. <coughs> But to understand why she took on this happy and cheerful name, we need to understand her past. Izumo and Takamagahara were two planets described as circling a giant black sun, which turned out to be Ix, the Eon of Nihility. Acheron hailed from Izumo. It was said that the planet often had heavy thunderstorms, but nearly all the history of the planet was lost due to its destruction and due to the Hoyoverse Twitter community spreading misinformation about it, I mean due to the followers of Enigmata meddling with its history, which is the same thing anyway. Fortunately for us, some of the events that occurred on the two planets were not lost to Twitter's lack of media literacy and they were revealed revealed in Akron's promotional materials. One day, a faction called the Yayorozu no Kami, or Kami for short, descended from Takamagahara onto Izumo with a single goal, to slaughter all humanity. Kami are described as some sort of monsters that are akin to deities. One of the Kami, dubbed the Sovereign of Revelations, which Okay, I know that I said that I won't focus on Honkai Impact 3rd in this video, but please, let me have this one. The Sovereign of Revelation is meant to be a parallel to the Hersher of Reason slash Truth. Even the name is identical, since Hersher is German for Ruler slash Sovereign, so its name is literally the Hersher of Revelation. If we go even further, the first divine key, which is the weapon forged from the core of the previous era Hersher of Reason, is called the Key of Revelation. Another name for it is Void Archives. And for those of you who are familiar with Welt's lore, you'd know that the Key of Revelation is sentient. And not only that, it traveled on the Astral Express together with Welt at some point. Now back to Star Wars stuff, I promise to let my inner Honkai geek loose in the next video.
After the people of Izumo broke 70,033 warriors' blades and slew the sovereign, they used its body to forge the first Edict Edge, a sword that can use the divine power of Takamagahara after the user recites the mantra contained in the blade. Basically, they used the corpses of the kami to make powerful swords that could fight the kami. Please note that when the text mentions that they broke 70,033 warriors' blades, it's a figure of speech meant to represent the number of people who died during the fight. I saw some people claiming that they forged the edict from those 70,000 broken swords, but that's not what the text says, it merely talks about sacrifices. Another absorbed claim that I saw regarding this number was that it's a reference to the Hershers in GGZ, which is completely false, GGZ has nothing close to that number of Hershers. The most it had was in the first cycle, also known as Era Zero, where they were 71, which is nowhere close to 70,000. The people of Izumo ended up forging a total of 12 Edict Edges, which they dubbed the 12 Sentinels. With the help of those weapons, they managed to turn the tide of the war in less than 10 Ember Eras. However, this wasn't enough to defeat the Kami. While using the divine power from Takamagahara to fight the Kami, the humans of Izumo turned into Oni. In a final attempt to defeat the Kami, the people of Izumo used the 12 sentinels to craft two blades, Origin, which was wielded by Acheron, and End, which was supposedly wielded by Hakuhatsuki. Hakuhatsuki, also known as Shiraga Oni or White-Haired Oni, fought Acheron in a duel to determine the fate of the planet. During the discussion with Welt in the story quest, Akaran confirmed that Hakuhatsuki was indeed a character variant of Kevin slash Kiana. We don't know the exact reason as to why they fought. Maybe he came under the control of the Kami, but if we parallel their stories to Honka Impact 3rd, since Akaran said that they were similar, things might get a little bit more clearer. In Honka Impact 3rd, Kevin wanted to implement a project that would save humanity from Honkai by trapping every living person on earth in a dreamscape and fusing them into a giant called the spiritual Adam. May and the others fought Kevin to put a stop to this project and ended up coming up with a better solution. I imagine that the conflict between Acheron and Hakuhatsuki was similar in nature, each fighting for what they believe is the right approach to deal with the Kami. Unfortunately for Acheron, even after she killed Hakuhatsuki, the fate of the two planets was already sealed and the battle was meaningless. Izumo and Takamagahara started sinking into Ix's shadow and got destroyed. Origin and End were broken in combat and a last blade was forged into Noth. This is the very blade that Acheron wields in the story right now. As to why this sword became Noth, we don't really know. As Acheron realized that everything was futile, she was consumed by the shadow of nihility, resulting in her somehow surviving and becoming a self-annihilator. The sword transforming could be a reflection of that. After the two planets were completely consumed by Ix, Acheron lost her home and was forced to wander the universe as a self-annihilator, continuously spreading the path of nihility everywhere she went. Just like how I spread the path of subscribe and give this video a thumbs up for more Honkai related content in my every video. Nihility is one of the many paths that people can tread on in Honkai Star Rail, but unlike the other paths, Nihility is a little bit peculiar. Let me ask you a question. What is Nihility? Now let me answer the question question that I just asked you for some reason. In philosophical terms, nihility refers to the concept of nothingness or non-being. It is often explored in metaphysical, existential and philosophical discussions about the nature of reality, existence and consciousness. Nihility constitutes the basis for many philosophical schools such as nihilism, existentialism and absurdism, each with its own view centered around the concept. For example, nihilism adheres to 
to the idea that life lacks objective purpose, meaning or morality. On the other hand, existentialism acknowledges the lack of meaning on a general scale, but emphasizes the idea that individuals can create meaning for themselves by actively searching for it. These philosophies can, to a certain extent, also be associated with the factions that follow this path in the game. Let's start with the self-annihilators, of which Acheron is part of. They are not a faction in the classical sense, but more so a consequence of nihility existing. The self-annihilators are individuals who have stepped into Ix's shadow and lost the meaning of their own existence. They are the purest representation of the idea of nihilism in the game. Each self-annihilator loses existential properties, such as corporeal body, mental cognition and personal memories. For example, some self-annihilators have their skin turned into something like rotten wood, some have their endocrine system disrupted, becoming unable to distinguish distinguish between pleasure and pain. Some lose their memories, others lose their senses. And as we've seen with Acheron, her memories are slowly fading and it's hard for her to keep a clear mind. In the end, nihility will consume all the self-annihilators, but there are some who can resist it and continue living. Acheron is one of them. Some self-annihilators are said to even join the Doctors of Chaos to fight the idea of nihility in what little time they have left. Before disappearing, Dr. Primitive, number 64 of the Genius Society, theorized that self-annihilators are how the path of nihility propagates through the universe, despite IX being one of the most passive eons. The Doctors of Chaos are another faction tied with nihility. The easiest way to describe them would be people who resist nihility by trying to prove IX that there's meaning in existing. The Doctors of Chaos mirror traits from both existentialism and absurdism. They give life meaning by trying to accomplish something, even if it's something paradoxical and impossible, which is sort of poetic, reflecting on the fact that people can create meaning out of the most absurd things, and it's the personal belief that counts when opposing nihility, not the end goal. A lesser known faction associated with nihility is the vice IX. They are so elusive that many argue if they even exist in the first place. It is said that the members of this faction lurk in the empty reflections of the void. Those who gaze into Ix's shadow for long will be drawn to the dark energy overflowing in the abyss, eventually passing through the dark web that separates reality from nothingness. A question that I've seen a lot is how did Acheron became an emanator of nihility? What makes Ix different from other eons is that they don't really create emanators. Ix is said to be the most passive and reclusive eon. They believe that existence is absolutely meaningless, so doing anything is worthless. They just exist. But the neon, even by simply existing, can cause massive repercussions for mortals, like Acheron's homeworld. It wasn't destroyed because IX wanted to annihilate it. It was simply caught in its orbit and got swallowed. Nothing more, nothing less. This is why everyone in Panacone is so on edge when it comes to Acheron, since emanators of nihility are not supposed to exist. They are an anomaly. IX doesn't grant power to anyone, but because Acheron was caught by Ix's shadow and managed to survive, she was unintentionally given some of their power, resulting in her becoming an emanator. Acheron is a tragic character. While living on Izumo, she had to constantly fight the Kami, ended up killing her version of Kevin, and watch helplessly as all of her efforts and resolve were for naught. On top of that, she was consumed by Ix, but did not die and was forced to wander the universe as a self-annihilator, continuously losing parts of her being while also being feared and targeted by factions due to being an emanator. On the other hand, I am very glad glad to see that Hoyovers gave her a bigger role and didn't tie her down to a specific world. I was very disappointed when they confined Bronya to Bellabog. The Honkai trio, Kiana, Mei and Bronya, hold great significance to the series and I want to see them have a greater role in the overarching story. But uh, I guess we still have Silverwolf, huh?